Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss radians and the unit circle. This video is going to be pitched at beginner undergraduate university students and perhaps senior cycle school students. Beginning with the definition of pi, I'm going to work my way through radians and the unit circle. And at the end we will have derived the cosine and sine for various angles on the unit circle. Before I begin, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all my videos archived and listed, and I also have a few other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. So let's begin. Pi is a number which is seen all over life, seen all over science and engineering. And sometimes we can lose sight of where in fact pi comes from. But pi is simply a, a definition, it's a ratio we define pi as the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter. So pi is said to be c over d, the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. And very quickly using this simple definition, we we're able to get some very useful results. First of all, we know that the diameter of a circle is twice the radius of the circle. In other words, d is equal to two times or the radius. By inserting this into our definition of pi and rearranging, we find that the circumference of a circle is equal to twice pi times the radius. From this simple expression, that the circumference is equal to twice pi times the radius, we are very easily able to extend or move on to the concept of radians. It's much more useful to define angles using what's known as a dimensionless quantity, which means it is one without units. For example, length of course is measured in meters, time is measured in seconds. Angles usually are measured in degrees. They have a dimension. But as I say, it is often useful to talk about a dimensionless angle. Why would we bother to do that? Well. That's not a particularly easy question to answer until you begin doing more advanced science or engineering and it becomes obvious thereafter. But at the moment, just let's, let's accept that a dimensionless angle is something which is useful. As I said, we currently measure angles in degrees. And degrees, of course, is a unit, it is a dimension. So let's see if we can somehow define a dimensionless angle. We do this by saying we define the, an angle as the ratio of a circle's arc length to its radius. This is theta is equal to L the arc length over the radius. How is this dimensionless? Well, the dimension or units on length on the arc length is going to be the meter. The length or excuse me, the dimension or units on the radius is also going to be the meter. And these cancel each other out. So what we're actually looking at is a dimensionless angle. Let's just picture what this means. If we look on the right hand side, we have a circle. Now, it, the length of the full circle is its circumference. If you pick a section of the length, we speak of an arc. So I'm going to give the arc the letter L to describe it, C to describe the full circle's length, the circumference, and or the radius to, des to describe, well, of course, the radius. Now that we have defined a dimensionless angle, namely that theta is L the arc length over the radius, we speak of radians. So theta is now measured in radians rather than in degrees. Now, what would happen if we looked at the whole circle? So let's say the arc length became the circumference of the circle, or we looked at what is the total, what is the sum of all of the angles in a circle. So if we plugged in C instead of L, we find that there are C over R radians in a full circle. But we know, of course, that C is equal to twice pi times R, and we're able to cancel the R's, and we see that there are twice pi radians in one full circle. So that means, as I said, we have two pi radians in a full circle, in contrast to having 360 degrees in a full circle. So where can we go with this? Because, as I said, there are two pi radians in one full circle, 
or 360 degrees in one full circle, we are able to see the relationship between angles in degrees and angles in radians. So I've written some of the more useful uh, definitions of the angles in front of you. This is something you should know. You should know in your own head immediately what is meant in terms of degrees by 2 pi radians or pi radians or pi over 2. The ones down here for the smaller or more less used angles like 45 degrees, 270, 60 and 30 degrees, you don't necessarily need to know off the top of your head, but after a while most likely you will just remember what they are. Now, of course, zero degrees corresponds to zero radians. That shouldn't be a surprise to you. 360 degrees is two pi radians. So half 360 is 180 degrees or pi radians. If we half this again and go from 180 to 90 degrees, we go to pi over 2 radians, and so forth thereafter. In fact, if we wanted to graphically, we could look at it in the following manner. So I've drawn a circle, and I've noted, let's say, an arbitrary angle theta here. And the circle lives, of course, in two dimensions. So we have the x-axis here, and we have the y-axis here. So this diagram has all the same information we had a moment ago. Let's start at this point here at zero degrees on the x-axis. So we have zero degrees corresponding to twice pi radians or zero radians as well. If we go up to 45 degrees, that is equal to pi over four radians. 90 degrees is pi over two radians. It is very useful to split the circle up into quadrants. There are four quadrants in the circle. So the first quadrant will be in red, the second quadrant is in green, the third quadrant is in blue, and the fourth quadrant is in black. So I was discussing the first quadrant a moment ago. We went from zero or 360 degrees, or zero or two pi radians, right up to pi over two radians. Now if we go into the second quadrant, we have 135 degrees, which cor corresponds to three pi over four radians. That is simply adding this 45 degrees, this 45 degrees, and this 45 degrees. So you can do the same thing the whole way around. We find that 180 degrees is pi radians, that 225 degrees is five pi over four radians, that 270 degrees is three pi over two radians. And finally, that seven pi over four radians is 315 degrees. What I haven't put in are the, the useful 30 degrees and 60 degrees. The reason I haven't drawn them in there is because it just makes the diagram look quite cluttered. Nonetheless, they are very important angles to understand and be comfortable with. So for this reason, I've written them here. 60 degrees corresponds to pi over three radians. 30 degrees corresponds to pi over six radians. How do we co convert between degrees and radians? Well, if there are 360 degrees in two pi radians, then one degree corresponds to two pi over 360, and one radian corresponds to 360 divided by two pi.